Welcome to this Wise Women Roundtable, looking at the eclipse cauldron that we are currently in the midst of as we head towards the cross quarter. Um, and the, the, the eclipse cauldron will close with the Taurus full moon on October 28th. So uh, just a little bit before we jump into all of that is that, and I think Nalini spoke to this and maybe others have spoken to this before in our previous roundtables, is the, um, the challenges that we're having with the intensity of this time. And <laughs> I personally have had some big challenges. And one of, the, one of them was we went to New Mexico to visit our grandson and to be on the path of totality for the eclipse, which was stunning. But a couple of days before that happened, I fell and hurt myself in the worst pain I've been in many, many years. Like it was excruciating. Um, I was able to deal with it enough that we could watch the eclipse. And um, I, I was able to actually stand up and walk because I couldn't at first after I first injured myself. And um, and then we drove home <laughs> that day, eight hour drive home, but I was able to lean the car seat back enough so I could do that drive. And I was actually not in that much pain driving home, but I did go to urgent care yesterday and to mainly to confirm that I didn't break anything and that, um, and then they gave me some steroids and some things that have helped enough so that I can be here now. And I'm aware that I haven't been in this much pain in, forever and uh, physically I've been in this much you know I've been in um I've been in pain at different times for different reasons but this was the most intense pain I've experienced in a really long time and uh it also um is like what the hell like what why do I need to have this experience so I've been pondering that looking at that looking more deeply into why that is is it a message? Is it just a part of something that needed to happen to process through my body? I don't really fully know the answer, but I'm continuing to be with that. And then that brings up this idea, something that I got involved with many years ago. And this is as we approach the Taurus full moon, partial lunar eclipse that will close this eclipse cauldron is um, Taurus is the archetypal energy most associated with how do we enjoy the pleasure of life. And that is something we are really not taught about in our culture. And in fact, there's um, often judgments about pleasure being sinful, <laughs> but sacred pleasure is our birthright. It is why we are here to have an experience of sacred pleasure, but we've been living in a paradigm that focuses on pain. And so in the pain paradigm, we can experience pleasure, to some degree, but if we were in a pleasure paradigm where the focus was on pleasure, the enjoyment of life, the enjoyment of connection and beauty and nature and all the things that bring us pleasure, uh, if we were focusing on that, and then maybe pain would come along now and then to remind us that it also has something to teach us, but we'd be learning more from the experience of pleasure. So I'm feeling really lit up about this. I, uh, back in 19, I don't want to say 99, I was with a priestess sister and we decided that we were going to be priestesses of the pleasure paradigm. <laughs> and that pleasure was going to be our main focus and that we were, um, we were done with the pain paradigm being the leading focus and that we were, um, eliminating that. And I will say from that point, I have done a lot of work that has allowed that to be the case. And then this last week, I just got really swallowed up by the whole pain thing. So, um, <clears throat> and I'm sure I'm learning things from that and it has its place and I'm not dismissing it as something, but I do feel like as we approach this Taurus lunar eclipse that we can, again, maybe be more conscious of how do we choose pleasure in our lives and not always feel like pain is what has to drive us and to uh, take us where we're going. So uh, we have um, the, we're kind of in the, uh, uh, I guess a week and a half until the next, till this eclipse happens with the time of this recording. And uh, the, um, 
we're going to, we're going to have the sun move into Scorpio. We've got uh, Mercury and Mars and Scorpio. We've got all this Scorpio energy. And then of course the cross quarter that happens when the sun reaches 15 degrees Scorpio is um, the halfway point between the, the September uh, equinox and the December solstice, or that we're coming into that halfway point, that between point. And Scorpio is about edge walking. It's about how are we walking between the worlds or how are we walking on the edges of things so that we can experience maximum growth? Uh, I think it was William Irwin Thompson in his book, When Fal Falling Bodies Take to Light. And he talks about the edges are where growth takes place. So we're mm -hmm. really being pushed to the edges right now in this eclipse window. And as we move towards this cross quarter time, and so how do we embrace that? And a lot of times people are afraid of the edges and they you know, wanna back off and say, whoa, no, can't go there. Uh, but how do we have the courage to look um, and be with those edges and even look beyond those edges? And I feel like that is a lot of the energy that is present for us at this time as we are moving towards perhaps using our shamanic abilities to really um, increase the ability to experience pleasure as a um, evolutionary imperative. So with that, I'm gonna turn this over <laughs> to Sarah and I'll probably be turning off my screen so that I can lay down so it can take care of my back. So you know why I'm doing that. And uh, Sarah, thank you for taking this over. Mm. Thank you, Kaylin, and thank you for being here today, despite your discomfort. Thank you for sharing that with you, with us. So, um, yeah, so there seems to be a theme anyway. Um, as this afternoon, I'm recording this in my early evening time. I was like, OK, so what's dropping in for today? I, I try not to plan anything. And I started just being nudged and prompted to think about conversations that I had had with some of my clients, some of my friends in the last few days. And a dream also that I had, um, I'm actually running a program right now, which is all about the earth element and essentially being embodied. And I had this dream a few nights ago, which may well have been to do with because I'm busy writing materials about it, but it felt deeper than that. And it, it felt as if I was very much in the dream temples. And I heard myself say, you know, Sarah, being in a body is the hardest thing for you. It's been the hardest thing to, in this lifetime for you. It's not your favorite thing at all. And as I was listening to it, it, it did actually feel like another part of me and just a kind of like acknowledgement of, yeah, that's kind of true. And so I woke up and um, I was like, OK, yeah, it's good to good that it's out in the open, <laughs> that I can actually be aware of it myself rather than trying to pretend that I'm OK in a body. Um, and we went through the new moon and I got very clear guidance in the new moon to be fully present. I didn't get an intention as that. It was just like, be present, be present. And then my clients said to me, you know, Sarah, I haven't got an intention this month. I've just been told to stop and pause. What's all that about? How am I going to do anything? You know, how am I going to do? So we had this discussion about how we were being asked to stop and be in our bodies and experience what that meant to us and it will be different for each of us. So it seems very much a theme to slow down what Kaylin was saying, be in the pleasure space, just enjoy not multitasking, all the things that we all know about as kind of modern day busy women. So um, I think that seems to be a theme um, from what Kaylin was saying. And I also wanted to talk to you, and this is linked as well, and you'll understand in a second, a few weeks ago, in fact, two weeks ago, a group of graduates of the Flower Essence Diploma that I have the great honor of facilitating uh, flew for the first time in quite a few years down to Southwest France, and we spent the weekend together. It was amazing to be together. It really was. 
and um, we stayed in this very beautiful manor house in actually in my village and were looked after in beautiful ways by the people who own it and a couple of years ago I had actually been on their land because they have a big magnolia grandiflora tree there and that that's the big white magnolia flowers they're huge things not the pink pinkish like those which are also very beautiful and so I knew these people and I knew the tree so I was quite excited to go back and meet the tree and when I made an essence with this with this magnolia bud or flower uh, several years ago when I tuned in I was totally taken by surprise that Yeshua came straight in and I was like oh goodness me because I'd never actually had what I knew to be direct contact with him before. And I was like, hmm. So I didn't know quite what to do with it. So I just didn't really do anything, just wrote down. And then a client who was also taking the flower essence diploma, we were in a group together and I had relayed my experience with them and she started crying and she said, and this lady's in Florida. She said, I made a grand of magnolia, a grand of flora essence about two weeks ago. And Yeshua came through. And we were like, oh, okay. So we need to start listening here. So here we were back, a group of very wise, experienced flower essence people. And the magnolia tree was asking to be the center of the creation. And so we basically placed bowls underneath the magnolia and we, we allowed the trees and um, other beings, we essentially how essence people do these things we just kind of like pour water into bowls and go wow this is amazing <laughs> you have to kind of be there to, to understand it and and we left the water there and kind of went off and did our thing it was a beautiful beautiful weekend the sun was gorgeous and the blue skies it was just a very beautiful time and a few of the others there then started saying you know what, I can feel Yeshua's presence and I hadn't said anything. And so all of a sudden we started being really, really conscious of this. Anyway, so we made this essence. It was beautiful. We've all got bottles and we brought them home. And there begins often the months and years of, you know, integrating and saying, well, what it actually is this essence for and how would we share it if we wish to do that? Because often it's the experience that you're that changes you. You don't actually need always to take the essence. And then during the week that followed, which was last week, I had a couple of times when I had, again, the privilege to be with clients. And I heard such pain being expressed by these women. And we can all look inside of ourselves and go, goodness me, I, I can feel, I know that time, you know, but they were just being so honest and so this is how it is. And it was so damned hard, you know, it's just like really, really hard. And all I could do, what I felt was this essence was just present and I could feel the Christ consciousness. And exactly when you have this level of spiritual, emotional pain that you carry from life experiences that may be come from other things. There's not very much that can ease that pain, but when you bring this Christ consciousness, which I experienced then, you think, okay. And it starts just, everything kind of slows down and I don't really have words for it, but I started to really experience the essence without actually taking it because I think it had flowed through us as being part of it so I guess I just wanted to talk into my experiences of that and to really acknowledge how difficult things are right now and that if you have physical or emotional spiritual or whatever levels of pain right now maybe all of them together then uh, that there are healing balms right outside in the nature kingdom. And we don't have to pour water into bowls with groups of people <laughs> to experience it. It helps sometimes to be present with others. But yeah, so thank you for listening. 
And with that, I'm going to pass over to Nalini to <laughs> hand over the baton to you. Uh, well, thank you. I used to like running relays when I was young. <laughs> um, so we were talking a bit earlier, um, trying not to have Kaylin sit up too long, but we were talking earlier about this whole dualistic construct of pleasure and pain. And one of the things I've been observing lately um, are certainly the challenges within within myself, within my field and with others around me and those who are showing up are tending to present with what source is saying right now are symptoms of darkness or what we would call darkness. And when we make a polarity between the light and the dark, which we do here, it's it causes a for and against it causes an either or and we were the three of us were talking earlier about how this world we have been conditioned and taught that this world is a war world that this world is about conflict that this about those dualistic polarities do we have polarity here yes um, it reflects in its most grossly obvious way in our biology. We appear to be male, female, different. But none of that is real. And yes, it's physically real. And no, I'm not away with the fairies. It's this is this is something that we are all recognizing, if not integrating at this time. The equinox exploded our realities into these shards of fractals of reality construct. And I'm watching many grab for them. I mean, why wouldn't you grab for the size of the pool if you're drowning? But they're, they have very sharp edges. So I'm seeing a lot of beings with lacerated paws, <laughs> um, not realizing and still holding on to what causes them pain, which is the point here. How have we depended on pain one could say rather than pleasure, but there's there's an, an enjoyment of life that also acknowledges that life has challenges that could be called pain. I've gone through certain experiences where I actually did not experience pain or fear. And when all the medical staff around me or other people around me were saying oh this must really hurt oh you know you must be really afraid no and it depends on it simply depends on what currents we're riding letting the swell of what's happening right now support us so i'm watching myself inwardly look at how have i leaned on pain and fear for support as a worthy opponent or to keep me on my path or because some part of me came in to purify that right and because i mean whatever whatever belief system which we of course abbreviate bs um what whatever that is and it's all just streaming away. It's all pulling away. So at the moment, I look at people's configurations of energy and they are not cohesive and they're not meant to be at the moment where these, these, these pulling apart strands, pulling apart fragments, all of light because the shadow is also light. It's just a little filtered, but all of these things pulling apart and they're meant to do. And what we are meant to do is let go. And then if you just feel the energy, just let go of all those little things that are, it's usually in our physical bodies, sometimes in our emotional and psychic little Gordian knots, but they're just holding on to something that really will not serve us going forward. None of the rest of what it's about matters as much as it won't serve us going forward. And then let that swell carry us. It does not feel like drowning. It does not feel, well, it can feel like being overwhelmed, certainly. I mean, when pain takes over, that certainly is being overwhelmed. And we can't function in a linear mental way when that happens. And to me, one of the gifts of severe pain, which is a weird way to think about it, I know, 
but has always been, it takes me out of my head. I cannot mentally in a linear way process pretty much anything. Now that experiential form of learning is mostly gone for me, but it has come back up lately because we're in this absolute threshing floor, sorting hat, or maybe a million of them, you know, turbulence and just all of this stuff at, at once. That is happening. This is what is. But if we're present in that moment, surrendering into the light we are, the source essence we are. Like I I love it that Sarah brought up her experiences with Yeshua. That's it's a lineage of consciousness with which I am very familiar. And that comes up at certain times. Usually it's the Marys, the various Marys that come up for me and and they make comments like, really? <laughs> and it's always very helpful because it's a very calm, clear, high vibrational energy. You know, I have some of the other archetypal forms come up as well, simply because I can relate to them. We all have those. What, what we can most relate to will assist us. But it is also in the natural world. These energies are the natural world. So, for instance, I've been taking Aspen. Or actually, I shouldn't say taking. I've been working with Aspen Essence lately simply because I'm surrounded by them here in the Rockies. And for the most part, they're not turning gold this year the way they usually do. And that is such magic. They're turning all weird, crispy shades of brown. And some of them are trying. You can see them. They're like, we want to be gold. But <laughs> it's but it's not happening except in little weird mottled places on the edges. And so I, I will go out into the, the garden or into the area and you know put my hand on the trunk of an aspen tree here and just feel, just feel, because those root systems encompass the planet and just feel into it. And what I was feeling was this is this oddness in the foliage is their way of manifesting physically the turbulence that's going on within the planet. And it's it's a very calm response actually it's not this oh let's get lost in the drama that's a human thing but it's just let's feel what's happening and here's the manifestation of that and that's simply what is so if we can back off of the part of us that's been taught to judge that's been taught to, taught to subjectively value you know, my favorite image of taurus which with this full moon coming up is ferdinand in the field smelling the flowers you know, since I was a little kid, I loved that. It's like, he has the right idea. <laughs> you know, I'm just enjoying life. And so here the, the aspens are not, for the most part, doing the magic of the gold, but they're they're moving that direction. And then something else is happening because of the energies that are moving through all of us. So if we let them move, it's just my theory currently, but if we let it move through us, this will carry us to a truer version of home, which is the natural source essence that moves through us. It's nowhere outside us. It's not taught to us, given to us, preached at us by anything or anyone else. It's here. It's, it's there in the trees. It's there in the blades of grass. It's there in the blooms. They, they know what they are and how to manifest that. So do we. And what's happening that I observe on Gaia right now is it's just time. We need to become this. And so we are, and we will. So with that, I will pass the baton to Elizabeth. Thank you. Um, I want to add to this because I'm really new. I'm just a total beginner with, with pleasure, but pain's very familiar. And the clinging on to the habits of pain as well um seeing all these pieces fall apart in ourselves I, at least for myself i tend to think i know what i know and i that it's right and that's that's deep spiritual ego that i've built on top of the pain instead of pleasure um, being a very stoic, deprived warrior <laughs> and trying to be things that I'm not. 
um, has created a lot of pain in the body. Um, I also want to speak to those who may have chronic physical issues or pain that mm, seems to be really mainly physical or come from genetics. Um, that is the, the world I've been in and having the allopathic world tell me that I'm basically helpless and that there's nothing I could possibly do, that my future is very, very terrible and that I'm meant to be in pain and believing that. Um, so from the inside, then we build these terrible habits, addictions, um, really negative self-talk. And instead of being that essence that Nalini's talking about, we wear this really ugly sweater full of a lot of terrible self-talk. And only now am I realizing how it's created a physical experience of pain. Uh, the other piece that comes up is all of these pieces fall apart and the only thing that becomes left is our essence I think is the cultural value around pain and that's definitely apparent because there's an incredible industry of pharmaceuticals and um, false medicines that are not from nature that have everything to do with pain and of course, then we have alcohol and other drugs and things like that, that create the tight cycles of waking up, feeling bad, going to get your habitual fix to just get through the day. And what's the antidote? What's the antidote to feeling sorry for yourself, being a victim of emotional pain or all the trauma we've been through? and of certainly feeling a victim of your own body. Um, I think that at least in the past 48 hours, I think it's presence. Like Sarah was saying, be so present right now. You can't keep leaking all your energy into the future and how you hope that you can control some outcomes or manipulate outcomes, um, even if you mean well. And you certainly don't want to be leaking your energy into the past because it takes a lot of effort to flip your big book over and look at all the past unless you're doing it consciously to find some kind of linchpin around why you have certain habits or certain outcomes that keep showing up in your experience. Um, I think it's a, a waste of energy in general. And of course, all those little voices in your head that are not really your soul noticing that too, being so present is the antidote to much of these things, even present with the physical pain and the asking, talking to the body, our poor bodies, my poor body, I've talked to her so meanly, so terribly for so long and, and she's in pain because of that. So no wonder, <laughs> no wonder. Um, and taking on the projections of the allopathic medicine or or really anyone um, as they look through their own lenses of what they think they know about reality. Um, I think that too, another piece around this is to ask yourself, really ask yourself, what does bring you pleasure? And I'm new to that. I have never asked myself that question. I've always focused on what am I most afraid of? I'm going to go tackle that. And then I run that through my body and wonder why I'm so miserable. <laughs> or what am I, um, what's the next big block? What's my failure? What's my flaw that I must work on? I'm very, very clear on what my flaws are. And yet I've covered them up with more arrogance and more of my own ego stuff just to keep myself afloat. And that's no way to live, really. And the body can't live like that. And so she gets into more pain. And it's a terrible cycle um, of covering up all of these energies with things that are not real. The presence and asking that, what can I do today that brings me some pleasure? Making it very simple at first. Uh, finding 
little things to start with. Because if we're so used to being in pain all the time, we don't know how to seek out pleasure. And the foods that are healthy, but also bring your body pleasure, um, or or getting rid of things that might have brought you pleasure before, but they were temporary, like alcohol, for example, for myself at least, has to go. Because although she's been a very interesting friend and I've had a long love affair, that one has definitely damaged me and made it much harder to seek out true, healthy, natural, source-oriented pleasure. You know, alcohol exists in nature for very short times <laughs> and and it's not meant to be stored up in a bottle and imbibed really that's not natural um the natural piece is key so like finding those little moments the, the meditations that really help you to open up or the experience with those friends and making the flower essences that's so pure and Seeking purity versus power, I think, is a beautiful thing that's opening up that we can play with. Seeking purity is key. And so finding the pleasure that's pure, it's not linked to, say, a pharmaceutical industrial complex, or uh, it's not linked to addictions. It's not linked to lifestyles that are really born of pain. And that it's not linked to things that are beyond Gaia and human made. Humans have been in pain for a long time. We 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 tend to be very expert at suffering and and not so good at creating great brand new awesome paradigms unless the earth forces it to happen, and that's exactly what's going on. So we're in this beautiful place in space and the new energies are available, but we haven't been present enough to actually let them work on us. So we keep clinging on to the old sweater. But if you really unravel that old sweater, you'll find that then you can feel pleasure. <laughs> and again, I'm pretty new at this, so I'm, but I'm finding it. I'm finding like my, my body is experiencing this light. And it's like becoming free, becoming free of oh, I don't have to keep seeking out my fear and my my um, pain experiences to learn anymore. I can perceive these things outside my body and recognize them without running them through the body anymore. And that's totally important as our bodies are changing rapidly. We're becoming more and more formless, more psychic, more open, because that's what Gaia needs from us right now. So we can become the natural human again and not work in the unnatural controlled demolition of consciousness that's been going on for 12,000 years and longer. Um, lastly, I just want to point out that if you need a remedy for your physical pain, being present with it, but recognizing it for what it is. Just like shadow is really just light under pressure or consciousness under pressure, pain is actually also light. Pain is light too. And if you're recognizing that it's informative light and that you don't always have to experience it, like Nalini said, you don't have to experience it um, necessarily in order to get the information that you need. And you don't need to let anybody project onto you that you're supposed to be in pain either. That's huge. Or that you're a victim of your own body or a victim of your own genetics or whatever that might be. Don't let that enter into your heart space. Recognize that you're in this experience and it's all light. Now, that's a, that's a trick of the mind a bit because you got to convince your brain that that's true. But if you're really present with it, you can feel what I'm saying is true, that the pain is actually radiant light. And it's letting you know information. It's full of information. It's not trying to be mean to you. You're not a victim of it. It's really actually your friend. 
and it can give you so much if you're willing to see it for what it is, if you're willing to experience it for what it is. And it always ends up that then when your pain is relieved, you can feel, you, all of us have been through it when we're, we're really high level of pain and then we get through some relief, there's an expansiveness that happens. And that's that, that's that light being released and you feel better, you feel expansive, you feel euphoric, all your endorphins and your oxytocin is moving around in your body and you experience oneness and love. And that that process can be sped up if you're just present and you don't let yourself get stuck in the cycle of victimhood, especially around physical pain, because it's always only just energy. So I deeply appreciate, thank you so much for these lessons today in pain and pleasure and the beautiful breakdown of the old paradigm that we are not a victim of clinging on to the old, that it, if we can let go over and over again and be so present, it can help us to be relieved of what we think we know, be relieved of what we think is right, and experience the truth, because that's always there. And you're not going to see it if you run it through what you think you know. And you won't feel it in your body either. But your body knows. Your body knows real pain, real pleasure, and what to do with those qualities of light. Trust your body. She's very powerful and very strong. And we're here for these changes and the light that's available to us. So I hope that supports people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.